Hi, uh, welcome back to Britain It's OKC. This is a vlog or podcast about knitting and yarn and whatever other crafts I get myself into. Um, this is my second episode and uh, if you watched the first one, thank you. And um, it's been a while, so hopefully I haven't um, put anyone off due to that. Uh, I was supposed to record, um, not this last weekend, but Memorial Day weekend, but I got very, very tired and lazy basically. And I did almost nothing. Like I barely even did any knitting that weekend. So I mostly sat on the couch and watched TV. Um, <laughs> So I have a lot of acquisitions and things to share today since it's been a while. Um, so I'll get right into it. Uh, my first thing I have is I have one whip, just one. <laughs> um, I've, I don't know why. Maybe I haven't been knitting as much. I'm not really sure. Um, so I finally finished my Morse Health socks. There's one. And here's the other one. I said I was going to make a green pair too, but I haven't done that yet. Um, this is the Mortel uh, pattern by Inga of Knitting Traditions or Knitting Tradition. Um, I really liked it. It was good. Uh, I used Baracco DK Vintage, Baracco Vintage DK. Um, I learned, I forgot to mention this last time, I learned how to do the old is it old norwegian yeah the old norwegian cast on for this and now i can't remember how to do a regular long tail cast on and honestly i'm not that worried about it because um this cast on is really stretchy so i'm I might just go with that most of the time now i think it's also called a german twisted cast on but i'm not 100 percent sure don't uh take my advice on that <laughs> Um, but I really like that. I think I'm going to put those in the mail because I still need to mail them to my dad and, uh, maybe I'll make some green ones pretty soon. I'll definitely make that pattern again. I really enjoyed it. Um, so I have three whips that I'm going to show you today. Um, one of them I showed in the last video, but I have made some progress on it. Uh, that one is the Anchor Tea by Petite Knit. I, this is the first, uh, top down shirt or sweater that I've done. And, you know, I, I didn't know how to do it. I kind of knew how to do it just from hearing other people talk about it, but I didn't really know exactly how, cause I'd never done it before, but I finally, split for the sleeves. Oh, you can't really see it. Um, <laughs> you can kind of see right here, there's an armhole. Yeah, so I split for the sleeves finally, yay. <laughs> uh, got through all of that rib stitch and I like it. I'm, I'm really loving the way that it's looking. This is also the first time that I've used hand dyed yarn. And this yarn is from a chick that knits and it's a, and she's an indie dyer in Edmond, and she also has a yarn store where she sells mostly indie dyed yarn and handmade, or maybe not handmade, but um, sold other things from local makers. So their store is really cute. Um, if you ever are in Oklahoma, I recommend going there. Um, I'm gonna try to make it to, to a knit night there uh, when I go back to work, because it's kind of up in the same area. So I'm working on that. I finally did the sleeves. I'm excited. So now all I have to do, I'm on the like body part of it. So I just need to, you know, go around a bunch of times until I have the length. And then I think there's a ribbed bottom as well. But yeah, so that's, that's uh, the hard part is over, basically. Well, I still have to do the sleeves too, and that might be an ordeal. We'll see. <laughs> I might have to break out my double pointed needles if I can't do the 
what is it nine and a half inch circular thing i'm gonna i plan on trying that i think that's the the what's it called cable the cable that i have in here i think is nine and a half so this is i might as well ask you all about this and if you have any knowledge you can comment below and let me know um does anyone have trouble with because I have these stoppers on the end of my cables until I, you know, until I get to this later after I finish the body. And it's kind of, they're kind of getting in the way. So I've rubber banded them together <laughs> to kind of hold them away from the body part right here. This tiny little, that's as far as I've gotten since I split. <laughs> um, yeah, but is, is it better to put them on? Um, waist yarn or other yarn um let me know because i don't know <laughs> i just noticed that it was kind of annoying when i was going around the armholes um so that's that one and then what else oh so another thing that's kept me from filming is um I have another niece and she came early on Memorial Day and um, she's a month early and she's still in the NICU right now, um, but she's doing really well and I got very excited. Um, I was waiting to make her something until she came out because I didn't know how little she would be or, or if she was going to be a big baby or when she was coming or anything like that. So um, I waited, which was good because She's a preemie, but she weighs like five pounds. She's kind of a big preemie. So she's nearly, nearly the size of a regular um, newborn. So I decided, and I could have done this earlier, but I didn't. I got very excited and I cast on a romper. Let me... I don't want to lose it, <laughs> lose any stitches. I've already had to do part of the seed stitch in the middle a couple times. So yeah, I'm this far. This is the front, I think. I think it's going to be really cute. It has a seed stitch in the middle. Yeah, and now you can see it. I'm, I'm very excited about this. Um, This is the spring duo baby romper pattern by sandra magalias i don't know if i've said her last name right i'm very sorry um yeah but it has like all the all the baby sizes um i'm doing a three to six month it looks lit it, i keep thinking it looks little but i'm already doing i started the decreases for the the chest part of it so I don't know, maybe it isn't that big because the bottom looks big. <laughs> it looks wide in this part. Maybe it's to fit a diaper in there. I don't know. Um, but I'm doing that and I'm using, I have another ball of that yarn somewhere. Oh, here it is. <laughs> I had to do a few swatches because I am terrible at swatching and I knit really tightly. So I always have to go up one or two needle sizes. So I automatically went up two needle sizes and then I didn't have to. So I made two swatches and then undid the second one and then just said, well, I'm still not hitting gauge. So I'm just gonna go with the, the one needle size and not worry about it. It should be, it was nearly the gauge it was supposed to be. So I just went with it. Um, I'm using for that a Lion Brand Kobu. There's glare. Sorry. It's this really pretty, like, pink color. But the color is called mauve. 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 I would say this is more mauve, but that's what they call it. <laughs> um, so this yarn is 51% cotton and 49% rayon from bamboo. Yeah. Um, it's very soft which I assume is the rayon from bamboo thing. But I, I wasn't sure, I'm not a pink person usually. I'm not like crazy about pink, but um, this is really pretty. And when I started knitting the swatches, 
it looked a very like rose gold color. So I'm into it. Um, I was going to say I love rose gold. My engagement ring and wedding ring are rose gold, but I took them off to wash my hands and forgot to put them back on. Um, it's really, it's a gorgeous color. And I've actually ordered some yarn that's kind of this color, but not this brand. But I might have to order this, some of this, and make myself a summery shirt because um, the color is so pretty. So that's what I've been working on the last few days. And I plan on, I haven't worked on it in quite a while, like since before I recorded the first episode. Um, I'm making myself a tank top. I'm gonna have to find where did I put it? Oh, it's in here. <laughs> Lost it for a minute. Um trying not to drop any stitches or anything. Oh, I'm knitting. <laughs> I was like, why are there two bowls of yarn here? I forgot. I'm knitting both the front and the back at the same time. On two 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 balls of yarn I have my two balls of yarn here <laughs> I don't know if this is a good idea or a bad idea but I'm doing it I was I was going to um change the pattern and put them in the round and then um I was having trouble I was I was reading the pattern wrong honestly and um I was having trouble with the sides the end pieces and then I decided not to I was going to knit like up until you would sew the sides together because there's a little, it's split on the side a little bit. And I was going to knit up until there and then join them in the round, but I decided not to because I was, I was having so many issues. Um, there's, cause it's a little, I don't know. I'm trying to hold this and not drop it all off my, off my needles. There's the edges are like this. So I was having trouble with that. So I decided not to knit it in the round, which is fine because that's the pattern says to knit it flat anyway. So on this one, this is going to be the summer, no, the Streamline Tank by Alexandra Tavel. Um, and I'm knitting it in Rowan Summer Light DK in the color Mocha, I think. And that's what that looks like. It's this really pretty purpley. I wouldn't call it brown, but it's this, this really pretty purple. Um, yeah, and this, what is this yarn made out of? I think it's just cotton. Made with Egyptian cotton. Yeah, it's 100% cotton. It's really nice. It feels nice. Um, I don't know how much people know about Oklahoma, but it gets really hot here in the summer. So I've, uh, I have a plan to make myself many summer tops. So, so I can wear knitted stuff all the time, even when it's 95, 100, 105 degrees here, <laughs> uh, which it's, it's getting there already. It's 80 something today and it's very muggy outside. So, uh, I will be wearing no sweaters. <laughs> Well, I take them in. I take cardigans with me everywhere because of air conditioning, but can't wear sweaters in the summer. <laughs> um, so th those are all my whips that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, so on to acquisitions. This is kind of embarrassing <laughs> because I, I kind of got really excited, I, I guess, or I gave myself permission to just buy a lot of stuff so yeah bought a lot of stuff <laughs> um one of the things that I bought I had been thinking about for a while um I I use Knit Companion and I use it on my iPad and it has like these really nice row counters and stuff in there but it's kind of annoying especially when you get in a like long stockinette portion where you just have to go until you hit a certain number of inches or centimeters. Um, it's really annoying to have to click after every row. So 
I thought I would get some of these um, row counters that you hang off your needles and they have numbers on them. And they have these little loops. So like when you got to row three, you would put your needle through there and it kind of acts as a placeholder stitch marker too. So, and then um, this thing at the bottom comes off. So like if you reach 10, you can then like start again or put it somewhere and be like, now I'm on 40. So you put it on four and then um, move it like you would normally if you wanted to. I think there are multiple ways that people use them and I haven't figured them all out yet. I have used them and they're really nice and I think they're really handy. I got these ones from Campfire Creek and if you just search Campfire Creek Row Counter and um, they have a lot of really pretty ones. Um, this one is called My Favorite Floral and it's got pink beads on it and then this really pretty, oh, I won't be still. It has a rose in there. It's not focusing, <laughs> but there's a little rose. I wonder if I do that. Maybe. <laughs> it's got a, a little rose thing in the thing and a pearly bead on the bottom. <laughs> and this one is called uh, Marry Me Maroon. And it has maroon beads on it and a really like shimmery thing on the bottom, clip on the bottom. So those are really nice. Um, I recommend them. They're very good uh, and handy. Then I got, um, so I really like the Lika interchangeable needles and I brought mine out here to show you guys in case you don't know what they are. Um, there are some missing in here because I'm using them, but they're these, I have the Lika Driftwood ones and they're really pretty. I use them on everything. Um, I haven't touched my metal needles since I got these. Comes with a bunch of different sizes and um, stoppers and everything. And I also have the short set too, which is, I didn't think I was going to use these. So I accidentally bought the short set online first. And then I realized that I had bought the short set and not the regular set. Um, but I, they've actually been super useful and I've used them a whole lot already. And, uh, it was a good purchase. I don't regret it. Um, but with them, they, it comes with a bunch of different sizes of cables and, um, these stoppers, if I can find some, yeah, these little stopper, the same ones that were on my anchor tee. And then these little keys and, uh, what do you call those connectors? So if you need to make your, make your cable longer or, or, um, move, move your project from one cable to another one, uh, those are handy. And then, um, the regular set comes with these black cables. So I bought these earlier this year or late last year. I can't really remember. Um, and my one gripe about the Lickin needles was that the, they don't swivel. The cables don't swivel. So when you have, I can use this as an, no, not that one. <laughs> um, so like, I'll, I'll show you on these. I can keep them from falling off. So they don't turn at all. So when you turn this, the cable turns, which can be really annoying when you have a heavy garment on your needles and on the cable. So, um, so the new one swivels. I'm going to try to show you, I don't know if it's even going to 
You're even gonna be able to tell. See my needle can turn all the way around. So when you're working um, your cable, your needle and your cable, you can kind of move them around to make it easier to hold and not as awkward and stiff, which I'm so excited about. <laughs> I, um, I went into, what store was it? It was Sealed with a Kiss in Guthrie. I went there and I was just going to buy a ball winder, which I bought and I'll talk about in a minute. Um, and the one of the women who work in there, uh, she was like, oh, have you seen the new cables? And I said, well, I saw that you had a bunch of pink cables here that go with the blush, the Licka blush set, but um, cause you can get these in pink and also blue. That one's called Indigo. Um, and she was like, oh no, you need to check out these. They're not just pink, they're um, swivel needle, they're swivel cables. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> um, Cause that was, that was the one problem I had with these needles. So it was awkward and my Haya Haya sharps, um, I used to knit on those. That's what I learned on. Um, they swiveled around and it was just really awkward at first when I switched to the Licka needles. Uh, so I bought one of every size that they had. Um, and I'll probably buy some more of them because I just like them so much better. And they come in a little bag like this with the stoppers and the key, a key to tighten your needles on there. And then uh, the cable. Yeah, I got... I think like six of them because why not? Um, I knew it was going to be like life changing. So, so I kind of went crazy. They, they weren't very expensive. This one was only $4.25 at my local yarn store. So, um, if you have used like a needles or you're looking for some new interchangeable sets or whatever, I would go with that. I love them. I have no gripes and I talk about them to everyone, even people who don't care about knitting. <laughs> I'm always like, see my needles? They're so pretty. Uh, and plus they're awesome to knit with. So while I was in there, the reason that I went into the store <laughs> was to get uh, the new Lico ball winder. So I had, this was a, make sure I'm not skipping anything. Um, this was a purchase that I was very excited about, but I also kind of felt guilty because it was about a hundred dollars and, um, I have a ball winder, but it's a plastic one from Knit Picks and it, it was, it clicks. <laughs> which is kind of annoying when you're, when you're turning it, the handle, it like clicks. Um, so I bought the liquor ball winder. I bought the Rosewood one. I think they also have, I don't remember which other, what the other one was called, but I got the dark one, which was Rosewood. And here it is. It's very pretty. Um, I had to call, no, I didn't call them. I emailed the company because when I got home, I opened up the box and the first thing I noticed was that this corner was like chopped off. <laughs> I'll show you compared to that corner. See, it's like the corner is just kind of lopped off, which fine, whatever, that was fine, but when I tried to put it together, this little part right here, uh, I don't know how you can see this the best. So this part right here, here, I'll show you how it turns cause I need it to turn anyway. So you turn this thing and this whole thing goes around, but it rests on, it rests on this little cone shaped thing here. And it has this and you have a little Allen wrench and you tighten it onto this peg that's here so that this doesn't fly off. It's also this doesn't fly off and so this entire thing doesn't fly off. See, you can't, it won't come off now because I have it tightened. 
But when I tightened this, this little screw thing <laughs> came out of the wood piece. Like it would just go, 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 and then it would never feel like it was tight. And then the entire casing would pop out. So that's no good because I couldn't tighten it and I didn't want like balls of yarn and this thing to go flying across the room. So, uh, <laughs> so I emailed them and I took pictures, but I should have circled the things on the picture. I regret that I did not <laughs> because what came in the mail was horrible, honestly. Um, I gave up and we used Gorilla Glue to fix this. <laughs> so this little, this little peg thing is in there with Gorilla Glue. My husband helped me fix it and it works now. <laughs> it works now. But um, there were a few little things on here that I noticed and I was like, man, that's really weird. Oh, here's another one. There's like a gouge. There's a gouge in it. And I was like, hmm, weird. Um, I don't mind it. It's fine now. Um, I was, the lady who, who helped me was so nice. She was so nice, so, so nice. And we had multiple emails back and forth. And um, I found out that they're handmade and there's just going to be little things, which is fine. I was more worried about the about the this little cone shaped thing coming off than anything else than any of the cosmetic stuff but um yeah she was very nice so i just decided that it's fine <laughs> it's fine and because she also sent me this piece except when it came it's like it's two pieces of wood and this, there was a gap here between these two pieces. It was crazy. Um, it was all the pieces I did not need. <laughs> so that didn't really work out, but I think it was a failure of communication on my part. So that was a little bit my fault, but I do recommend this. I've seen other people's and they, they were perfect. So this is just what happened to me. <laughs> Um, it's very smooth. Uh, I love it. It's really nice and it makes, um, really nice yarn balls. Uh, where's, I think, yeah. Oops. I, uh, balled up this one with it. It's very nice. I like it. It, they're taller than the ones that came out of my old one, so. That was that acquisition, but there is more. <laughs> um, I also, uh, from Seals with a Kiss, <laughs> from Seals with a Kiss, I also got nine skeins, skeins of Baraco Mantra. I don't know if it's going to show up. There it goes. So I got nine skeins of this and it's this color called toffee. It looks more yellow on the camera, but it looks more brown in person. So I got that. Online, it looked like a richer color, like a deeper, richer color than it does in person. So I am going to use it, but I'm considering I was going to do some research but if anyone has an opinion on this please let me know um I'm thinking about holding it together with some mohair that's like rust colored so it adds some like depth of color to it I don't know I don't know if that's a good idea and it's silk I think it's 100% silk let me look at my notes um yeah, it's 100% silk. And I was going to use it for a summer top, but I ha I mean, I have nine balls of it and they're 50 grams, I think. Mm. 
Yeah, they're 50 gram balls. So there's like 182 yards in each ball. Um, but I don't know. I got it on clearance. So even if I don't use it right away, it's not that big of a deal. Um, I did a little swatch just to see if I liked it. And here's what it looks like knit up. Like I said, it looks less yellow in person. It's a, the color is called toffee. But I just thought it was going to be a little bit darker. Um, I didn't, I saw it online and then I asked my husband if he would go get it for me because I'm always working when the yarn shops are open. So that's why he goes and grabs me stuff. Um, cause he's not working right now. Uh, he's not able to long story. Um, yeah, so I got that also from Seals with a Kiss. Uh, the, some of the yarn stores here have really long names, so that's why I'm blanking before <laughs> when every time I try to remember the name of the store. Um, I also got, <laughs> so my friend Jenny and I went down to Norman. So I had never been to two unraveled chicks at the yarn store in Norman. I'd never been there before. And Jenny texted me and said, Hey, let's go. You know, I think she tagged me on something cause they had some cool yarn in. And she was like a field trip, <laughs> field trip to Norman. So that's what we did. It's only about half an hour, 40 minutes away. Uh, it's one of the suburbs of Oklahoma city. So we went there and we had the best time ever. <laughs> um, the woman who owns the store is so nice. And there was another woman in there for most of the time that we were there. And we just had a great time. Um, it was really fun. <laughs> and we just kind of hung out and talked about yarn and talked about patterns. And it was fun. So I bought, while I was in there, I bought this project bag. It has owls on it and the inside it's reversible. So the inside is this really pretty like sea green bluish color with a white pattern on it. Sorry, my needles in the way. Um, but this is made by Bink Waffle, which is a woman owned company, which is awesome. And they make a lot of little project bags. Um, on their Instagram today, I saw that they have these little, they're called triangle bags. They kind of look like pencil cases. So it would be good to put your stitch markers and extra needles and stuff like that in. So, and they are at Binkwaffle, B-I-N-K-W-A-F-F-L-E on Instagram and at Binkwaffle.com. So, um, I love this thing. It's called a dumpling bag. Uh, it's so cute. It fits. I've been putting um, my niece's onesie in it. So, yeah, I love it. I'm probably going to get another one. Uh, it's easy to carry around. They have different sizes, too. This is the small one. So this is a small. It fits. It says two skeins of yarn, I think, is what the tag says. But I bet you could cram more in there if you're like me. Um, yeah, it says two to three balls of yarn. And this one is called Owl Party. Owl Party. <laughs> yeah, I really love that. So I got that. And then I, I was the most indecisive person while I was in that store. Um, we spent probably four hours in there. And I walked around the store five or six times, <laughs> just slowly looking at everything because I couldn't decide what I wanted. Uh, I'd gone in there looking for silk, some more silk yarn for summer shirts. And I don't think she had very many, um, very many things with silk in it because she's expanding her store and um, she had just reopened from being closed and renovating and all that kind of stuff. So uh, 
she didn't have a lot of what I was looking for, but I found, of course I found some yarn. Um, I found this Madeline Tosh and Shibui Knits yarn. And it's so pretty. It's like a light blue, almost greenish blue, but not really light blue and gray and a little bit of like bordering on charcoaly gray. So maybe you can see the color. Yeah, that's more of what it really looks like in person. So pretty. I'm excited, but I also feel like I need to make something I'm sure I'm gonna love out of this because um, it was a little more expensive than I usually spend on yarn. Um, this is the color Big Sky and our, each skein has 420 yards. It's a hundred gram skein of yarn. I think it's DK weight. I think most of the yarn I've been buying lately is DK weight. I did not put that down, but I think it is. No, it's fingering weight. I did put it down. <laughs> um, it's a hundred percent superwash merino wool fingering weight yarn so beautiful. I highly recommend this. I mean, I haven't knit with it yet, but it's so pretty. <laughs> I'm very excited about using that. And I also got um, this Noro yarn. So I had seen a bunch of people on Ravelry, Ravelry using Noro, but I had never seen any in a store before. And um, two Unraveled Chicks had this this in the store. I think this was the only silk that I found in the store. And this is the Sonata, I think. Yes. It's Sonata. I got three skeins of it. And it is DK, 100 gram balls. And it's cotton, rayon, nylon, and silk. So it has some silk in there. So mostly cotton and silk with some other things. I love the color of it. The color is really great. Um, I think I'm gonna make some kind of t-shirt out of this so that I can wear it to work. So I got that also <laughs> on my four hour uh, yarn journey <laughs> in Norman um, where I lost my mind apparently. But wait, there's more. <laughs> um, I also I got a lot of emails from yarn and crafty places, and it's probably not a good idea <laughs> because um, I think it was Love Crafts had a sale. <laughs> so so I got these. <laughs> um, it's the paint box yarns, cotton DK, and they're 50 gram balls, and there are 10 in each of these bags. And the, I got Stormy Gray, which I'm trying to avoid the glare. I got Stormy Gray, that's that one. It's a really pretty, like light dove gray. And then I got Pistachio Green. <laughs> It looks like mint ice cream, mint pistachio ice cream. And then I got slate. I think this is called slate green. Yeah, this is called slate green, which is like a, oh, I don't even know how to describe this one. Like a, a light teal kind of, except more green than teal. <laughs> yeah. And I also, um, I had insomnia. I have really bad allergies. So I had insomnia one night from my allergy pills and I was awake till two in the morning and I bought some yarn at two in the morning. <laughs> I don't have it yet, so it doesn't count this time, <laughs> but I'm very excited to get it. it. It's really pretty. I will definitely show it in the next video because um, it should be here pretty soon. Um, I was scrolling through uh, the Instagram of this YouTuber that I like, I'm about to talk about. 
and she buys all this really beautiful um, hand dyed yarn and I loved all the colors. <laughs> so I started looking on all of their websites to see if they had had recent updates and they had. So I bought some. <laughs> I only bought three. So I, my late night yarn, yarn buying was not too out of control. <laughs> Uh, my husband just laughed when I told him that I bought yarn at two in the morning. So that's good. <laughs> um, so the, the Instagram I was looking at and my recommendation for this, for this episode is, um, this woman called Aro Knits and Pearls and on Instagram, she's at aro.knits.n.pearls and on YouTube, she's rox. So R-O is spelled A-R-O, and then there's a space, and then a capital X. But if you search R-O Knits and Pearls on YouTube, it'll come up. And she is, um, she has family in Oklahoma, which was very strange. Um, I keep running into these knitting people who have ties to Oklahoma. I don't understand it. It's a weird world we're in <laughs> because you never hear about Oklahoma unless it's something bad, usually. Uh, so, um, I was watching her videos. She is a lawyer and she lives in Utah and she lived in Austin, Texas for a while. And I love all of the yarn that she shows. She mostly does test knits. I think she exclusively does test knits because it motivates her to finish projects, which is great. Um, but she also does this thing called True Crime Knit Night, where she uh, talks about true crime stuff. And um, I really appreciate her insight on it because since she's a lawyer, she kind of knows some of the procedure. So it, it to hear her talk about it, it's really interesting. Um, definitely go check her out. Go check out her Instagram, which is filled with beautiful yarn and gorgeous test knits that she's done. I really love her color choices and I think on some of them I might have to copy her because they're just really pretty. She likes a lot of pastel things which um I guess I'm in a pastel mood lately <laughs> with all of this uh, paint box yarn. Um yeah that's all I have for today. Uh I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please come back. I will try to record sooner <laughs> next time. Um, I won't. I won't keep putting it off and finding excuses with allergies and the heat and all that stuff. Um, yeah, it's this is not the best time in Oklahoma to be starting something new, <laughs> but it's it's working out. We'll get through it. <laughs> um, uh, so you can find me on Instagram at Brit Knits OKC and uh, wear your mask, stay safe, uh, make smart decisions, and happy knitting. Bye. <laughs>